Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to go over the 12 new audio effects inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. So these are all under the Fairlight Effects tab, which you can find under Effects Library, Audio Effects, and Fairlight Effects, which is really cool because uh, before in the previous free version they didn't really have any of these. So here I will have the original sound effect, and then we have 12 copies of that sound effect with each of these effects applied. And I'll try to briefly cover what each of them are supposed to do and show you how it sounds. So here's the original audio file. It has no noise reduction or anything like that applied to it. It's just recorded straight from the microphone. So let's go ahead and play it really quick. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. Okay, so pretty normal. So the first effect is called Chorus, which adds a modulated version of your original sound or vocals uh, right behind the original audio. And I imagine that this is much more useful if you're actually trying to do music. Um, but the idea is the extra modulated sounds uh, appear kind of in conjunction with the original sound effect. So it will have very little delay compared to the original sound. But according to the official documents, it's supposed to add harmonic interest. I'm kind of thinking of it as a real chorus where you would have multiple singers at the same time uh, harmonizing with each other. So anyway, you can pop open this editor, which has things like delay. Note that it goes only up to 30 milliseconds. Uh, modulation, which kind of distorts the sound a little bit. And a few extra settings to play around with here. So with these current settings, this is kind of how it's going to sound. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So cool, you can kind of see how the secondary modulated version of the sound appears pretty much right after the original sound, but it does change how it actually sounds quite a bit. Um, so next is de -esser, which the purpose of this is to remove harsh S sounds. Now I don't think there are really any in this clip so much, but it'll effectively take an equalizer here and remove the frequency where harsh S sounds would appear and try to reduce the noise there. So let's play it back with this de-esser enabled. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So you can see that while the audio is going, it is reducing a little bit of noise there. Um, but I didn't pick up anything that was too important to be corrected there, but if you have harsh S sounds, that's the tool to go to. Uh, next is very similar, so that's going to be the D hummer over here, where if you have um, basically some weird electronic instruments that are making humming sounds in the background, uh, then the D hummer gets rid of those hum sounds. Now once again, I don't really think there's much in the way of those, but I'll go ahead and open this up. You can see some of these frequencies where hums would be common at, and it tries to filter those out a little bit. Obviously, if you need to, you can enhance the amount, you can change the frequency, um, but let's go ahead and play it back with the dehummer enabled. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. Cool, but so once again, those two tools are more for fixing problematic issues with your uh, audio recordings. So next up is delay, which I find to be very similar to the echo tool. Well, you have the original audio, and then you can have copies of that audio play back at different points in the timeline. And you can control how long after your original audio, the follow-ups will play back by controlling the delay over here. You also have filters, so you can cut off some of the audio by moving the high cut over to the left. And you can cut some of the low frequencies off by increasing the low cut, which can give you a different sound than the original. But overall, from my perspective, it seems pretty similar to just using the echo effect. I'm not an audio expert, so I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. But here's an example of what it could sound like uh, with these settings. This is a test this recording a test to demonstrate recording some of the effects some of the that you can that find you inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So you can see how it will repeat and lose a, bit, a little bit of the audio volume as it goes on. And how long you want the delay to be is up to you. Uh, so next up is distortion, which is going to be really good for making your audio sound worse in a way, intentionally. Or I guess a better way of putting it would be make it sound like it was recorded on very old devices or kind of choppy or damaged. But in any case, the distortion effect can be really useful when you want the audio to sound less clear 
than if it was recorded with a really good microphone in a really good environment. So here, let's go ahead and play this back with the distortion. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So you could see how like with the distortion effect, you could easily make it sound like a 1940s video or something of that nature. So pretty cool. And uh, let's move on to Echo, which once again is similar to Delay. Uh, has a lot of the same filters, so low cut, high cut, uh, the ability to set delays. Uh, basically, when do you want these echo sounds to appear? And when you add the echo in, let's go ahead and play it back. This, this is, is a test, test recording, recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15 Fairlight Effects Library. Okay, so next up we have this flanger effect, which if we look at the actual documentation here, it'll say that the flanger was a sound dating from the days of dual tape machines. So basically it'll apply kind of a wobbly sound to your audio and it'll sound something like this. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So apparently um, there were some tapes in the past where when you recorded audio, it would sound a lot like that by default. So if you wanted that kind of effect, it's there for you. And let's move on to modulation. So I kind of see modulation similar to distortion, except with the added difference that the frequency is going to change over time. You can see it kind of in, uh, decreasing and increasing over time so it's sort of going to give you that wobbly effect as well but with a few more things you can play around with you can change the frequency and the amplitude uh, to really emphasize or de-emphasize this kind of effect so let's go ahead and play back this audio with modulation this is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of davinci resolve 15's fairlight effects library and obviously, depending on your settings, it doesn't need to sound super distorted. It's just going to have the change in the frequency over time. Um, so next is pitch, which is probably one that everybody's familiar with. If you want something to sound really squeaky or voice to sound really deep without changing the speed of the audio, this is the tool for you. So if you increase the semitones over here, it's going to make it sound squeaky. And obviously, if you lower it down, it's going to make the voice sound really deep. So let's play it back with positive semitones. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So please excuse the annoying voice there, purely for demonstration. Um, and let's move on to reverb. So reverb is the sound effect where you want it to sound like you're in a very open room, uh, like an auditorium that doesn't have any uh, furniture in it. You would get a reverb effect if you were to record it in there. But you can also add it in as a audio effect. So obviously you have a lot of dials here to play around with for increasing or decreasing the size of that reverb effect to kind of get your audio to sound more like it was in the type of room you're thinking of, if, if that's a giant cave or if it's just a small apartment room, um, the amount of reverb you're going to want is gonna change. So let's play it back with default reverb, which is quite dramatic. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So with that amount of reverb, I would think it has to be a gigantic auditorium. You can obviously lower that down. Um, next up is stereo width. I don't think you'll be able to hear any sound difference here, but uh, the idea here is that your audio, um, which normally has a left output and a right output, can be focused more towards each individual speaker. So like your left audio will be playing mostly out of your left speaker, or your right audio can be playing more out of your right speaker, or you can have it condensed more towards the middle. You see it turning more towards mono, which is basically one audio channel, where regardless of your speaker, it's gonna be playing the same audio. So when you have stereo audio recordings and you want it to be more condensed into one track, but not completely mono, uh, you can lower the width down here. And if you want it to be more spread out across your speakers, um, then you can change the width over to wide where the audio that's for your left track and your right track are going to be distinctly separated from each other. So let's go ahead and play this back here. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. 
And now I, I'm pretty sure there's really no difference or distinction to be made there because when I record audio with this microphone, it doesn't really make any distinction between left track and right track audio. Um, but if you have different audio tracks outputting to different sides, uh, such as if there's music in your track, then that might be a lot more relevant in that case. Uh, so let's finish up with vocal channel. And vocal channel gives you a few different tools over here in order to manipulate how your vocals sound in the track. So, so you have high pass, equalizer, and compressor, and obviously you can enable and disable any of these as you choose. Um, the high pass will cut off audio on this left side of the frequencies over here. If you increase the frequency, it increases the cutoff range. The equalizer section allows you to raise or lower audio depending on where the frequency is. So here I have some mid gain. You can see it's kind of in the middle of the frequencies, which you can also manipulate where that middle is considered to be. And you can increase or decrease the gain, basically lowering or raising the volume. And then the compressor over here will try to reduce the gain on audio that is way overkill. So basically, if you have any very loud sounds in your audio track, it'll try to bring those sounds down into an equal level with the normal sounds in your track. And you just have to play around with these settings until you get it roughly right. So with these settings for the equalizer, compressor, and high pass, we can go ahead and play this back. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So just one thing to note about compressors though, if you do overkill the compressor and get a huge amount of gain reduction, it does generally get you a little bit more of a robotic sounding voice. So you wanna be careful about how much you overuse these tools. Uh, but just to go back and compare it to the original sound, we will play it back one more time here. This is a test recording to demonstrate some of the effects that you can find inside of DaVinci Resolve 15's Fairlight Effects Library. So hopefully after going through all of these effects, you can kind of see the differences in the sounds you're able to create. Uh, all of these are available out of the box in the free version of DaVinci Resolve 15. And once again, you can get to them by going to Effects Library, Audio Effects, Fairlight Effects, and then you simply drag these effects onto the audio clip you want to change. And you'll know that a audio clip does in fact have an effect on it because it'll say this little FX symbol down there in the bottom left. And whenever you want to manipulate it, you simply click on the audio clip, you go to inspector, you find that audio effect, and you can click on this button over here in order to pop open the editor window. So, I've been Chris, that's going to be it for the 12 new audio effects instead of DaVinci Resolve 15. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you guys in my future video content.